Hey everybody, welcome back to another devlog of Sharks, my Python game development project that I started a few weeks ago now, a little over a month I would say. And today, as promised, we're gonna focus mostly on gameplay. There might be some other stuff that crops up, but I wanna finally make some progress on the actual game itself. So one of the things I wanna implement this week is a bit more of an inventory system. For now, we only had the projectiles that required us to keep track of it, and I wanna expand this further to take account of other items we might encounter in the game, and then maybe we get around to doing some more stuff. But again, unfortunately, I have another business trip planned for later this week, actually, to the US this time. So I don't know how much progress I can make, but let's get started. Okay, it's a month later now. I had a successful trip to the US. Well, success. I went to the US, I caught COVID, I was stuck in a hotel room for almost a week. I made it back safely, I call that a success. And then I had another conference within Japan. In a very remote area of Japan, but very beautiful. Now I am kind of preparing for another Europe trip next week. Nonetheless, I did make some progress, namely on the inventory system. But before we jump into the storage slot and item classes I've been working on, let's have a quick look at the game because something else has changed quite dramatically and that is hiding behind the tree. Alpaca is gone, for now at least. <laughs> so I actually was working on getting a bit of a player character going, which can look in all directions. And it is completely made just with polygons. I don't know how I got started with it, but for some reason I put it into my head to avoid any kind of pixelated sprites and get everything to work with polygons. I still might go back on that decision in the future, but it's a fun little challenge to figure out. Let me show you how I did it actually, if I end exit the game here. And I have a PowerPoint presentation here with the polygons of our character. And as you can see, I manually put in the coordinates for all the different orientations of the character. And I think this is a previous version, so I adjusted it a bit from there. But yeah, this is our main character for now. As I said, I reserve the right to make any changes in the future. But it is kind of fun to finally have a character. And I also tried to get the spear to look correct in her hand. It's not quite successful yet, but it gets the job done for now. All right, and what you cannot see here, but you might be able to see if we reset the map and start afresh is that there's a little arrow on the floor. So on the top left, we have our current inventory, which has 20 arrows. And if we shoot one, we lose one. But now it is possible to have items at any coordinate in the game. And similar to the boat tooltip, we get a little E if we get close to it, which means we can interact with it. And if I hit E, the item vanishes and gets added to our start slot arrows. So right now I only got this to work with the arrows, but I hope to make this more versatile. I've actually been thinking about uh, how to deal with the inventory quite a bit. If you look at games like Minecraft, you basically have nine or 10 inventory slots that you can access by scrolling the mouse wheel. And you have one active slot that is then bound to the mouse keys or the mouse buttons much rather. I don't think I want to go this route. I I think I want to have a very limited inventory, basically what a player could realistically carry. So maybe we can have a spear and the arrows at the same time, maybe three items max. And instead of having one active item, I'm thinking of basically having the player decide 
which mouse button to map an inventory slot to. So let's say we have the left click, the right click, and we can have a middle click, and we have only three item slots and they are bound to these clicks. You can shuffle them around, of course, and then you are quite restricted and you have to actually drop off the stuff you are not using at like a dedicated spot on your island. And this spot might of course be eaten by a shark in the future, so you should choose it wisely. So the inventory is managed with these storage slots and if you initiate a player, you can have an arbitrary amount of storage slots. In this case, I initiate this storage slot having the projectiles and 20 of them. And the other two are empty right now and they're all gonna be displayed in the top left of the screen. And then we have the early beginnings of an item class which allows me to have the item on the floor and when you interact with them, pick them up into your storage slot. But I'm sure this class and also the storage slot class will grow from here on out. Anyways, this is my current idea for the inventory and the gameplay down the road. Of course, it's still subject to improvements, but yeah, let me know what you think about that. And I will now start working on dropping items. A little while later and I have something new to show you. So, first thing you might notice is we no longer hold a spear right off the bat but we have a little spear on the ground so let's pick it up and it appears in our hand. So that's the first thing I was working on and the second thing I was working on is we can drop things now. So the way I do it now is with E we pick things up and with the mouse button I can use it and when I hold Q while pressing the mouse button I drop it and this way I can decide which uh, item I want to drop. If I pick up the arrows now in our second slot which is the middle click, if I hold on the middle click I would just shoot it but if I hold Q in the middle click I actually drop it. So I got this working now and I think now it is time to add another item, shall we? New item in the game officially. What is this, huh? Take your guess. Okay, not that hard. It's an axe. And you know what axes do? Yep, let's pick it up. And it looks a bit uh, awkward in my hand for now, but I think it will do so. If I press the mouse button, it does not cause the melee attack. It actually doesn't do anything, but what it allows me to see is this interaction function when I am close to a tree. And just to show you guys, if I drop this, I don't get the Z. So it only works when I'm actually having an X in my inventory and then I can interact with the tree and it's gone. <laughs> we can officially chop down trees. And as you can see, we actually do get some resource of some sort, wood, for now it's just a placeholder, and we can actually get rid of all the trees on the island and raise our frame rate this way. <laughs> if you remember last episode where we were really struggling to get our frame rate up and running. Anyways, this is the X, and I would say this counts as gameplay, right? We actually have another way to interact with the environment now. I would call that a success. All right, but that has to be it for today's episode. Finally, some progress on gameplay at least. Huh? I hope you enjoyed it and I hope we can keep it up for the next episode. So I hope you join me again next time, whenever that will be.